public space. Waging to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. <laughs> hey, good afternoon and good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us and thanks to, to the Honorable Minister for Youth Sports, uh, Culture and Heritage, Honorable Barnaby Bush, for reaching out to, and giving us a chance to have a, a discussion on I think what many you know, can appreciate is one of the great pillars in our sector when it comes to hospitality. And uh, as we get the discussion on the way, perhaps, Honorable Minister, uh, with respect to our guests, perhaps with you first. Uh, the idea that we're seeing you know, a sort of global transition to how we approach hospitality. We're seeing a renewed emphasis and enthusiasm amongst many in our sector to appreciate that you know, from the culinary creations in the kitchen to the way uh, the food is plated and brought to the table, there has to be love. And there has to be a semblance of, of, of service. Uh, and with this uh, Young Chef, Young Waiter competition, maybe share with us, uh, what was the impetus? Why this, why now? This was discovered or brought to our attention by the Ministry for Investment. Mm -hmm. And when uh, their staff, when we took over, they mm. it's like they find these things and whichever ministry it fits into, they try to adjust it into it. And But this, something that when I saw it, I, I was very pleased on more than one front. Mm -hmm. And I think this has actually is a cross-ministry mm -hmm. event because at the end of the day, we're looking at down the road getting some connections with the CIA, which is the Culinary Institute of America. Oh, I want to write that down, CIA. Yes, yeah. Yeah. and <laughs> we're also uh, looking to, which you could go into the education field on mm -hmm. that side. Then we're looking at the Cayman Islands getting more uh, Bob will explain what the Michelin star restaurant mm -hmm. system is. We're looking to get those type of restaurants that we can bring our restaurants to that standard. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, where did your parents and where did my parents work? Yeah. In the tourism sector. And this is why I grabbed at it so hard with, when I saw a young chef, young waiter, that we can now set a role model. We get a young Kimanian waiter a young Kimanian chef, they compete here. The, win the winners are then sent off to Monaco later on this year for the world finals. And uh, my ministry will be sponsoring the two winners there, their mm -hmm. airfare and their hotels. And when this happens and you look on television in Monaco and you see two of your fellow Kimanians there, this I feel could be... Uh, the beginning of getting our young people in the hospitality industry saying, look at what they look where they went, look at where they are. Mm -hmm. And there's the King of Monaco or the Prince of Monaco giving them their or handing out awards or whatever. That we can set this first stage where people will see it is something great mm -hmm. and that they will start to realize how much money there is. There is a good living mm -hmm. in this industry. And Adam, I'm sure, who's come from, he hasn't come with any with a golden spoon is his mm -hmm. mouth. And if you understand where Adam is and where he's come from, then you'll understand that this is a beautiful event. Right. And, and certainly, uh, I was going to perhaps uh, maybe speak to Adam at first, but if if I might just speak to you after. Um, join us, is Mr. Robert Walton. We have uh, Sean Valentine and Adam Hanley as part of it. I think back to, as the minister was sharing, yeah, we have Julia Child, you know, perhaps the first sort of TV celebrity chef. But then I, I go to Graham Kerr, who, when I would watch him initially, he would take a food, present it to you, and it was tasty. But it's also a recognition that you can take this thing, create it in, with substitution so it is also healthy. And maybe that's part of the culinary revolution in terms of the presentation to the public through television. So I love Graham. I, mean, I, I do as well. <laughs> you go back a little while. Well, you know, don't <laughs> let the, the young handsomeness fool you. Know, there's years under the age. Right? But those individuals, uh, and even today with uh, the legs of, you know, one of my favorites, you know, uh, wh whether we understand what it is to mm -hmm. be in the kitchen, uh, the work, you know, of our parents and grandparents, whether it was the caboose in our case, the physical heat, you know, from the, the firewood. Uh, to the, the jovial approach of people 
like like uh, Emil Lagasse, for instance. Yeah. He makes it fun, and he understands that yes, you have to be formally trained, but by the same token, food has to have love and has to be fun. Mm. So, Mr. Walton, from that perspective, a global competition like this, what does it mean for the individual, for an individual jurisdiction, but even for the global culinary sector? Yeah, you can tell. I think you should tell them you are that you're president of the. It's very so make them know your position when about this young chef, young thing where it's evolved from. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. So let me. Well, firstly, I I love hearing you talk about how those those celebrities in those <coughs> way back days <Yeah. laughs> were inspirations for even for me. Yes. Uh, and um, and you know, there's been a, a culinary and hospitality revolution in the UK, mm -hmm. if you like, over the last. 25, 30 years, where we we were the we weren't good. London was not what it is today, and I think we all know that, and we all mm -hmm. recognise that. But what has happened is that the the way that the way that London evolved, the way that chefs, British chefs, mm -hmm. evolved, and have then, if you like, spurned off these new stars of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The Young Chef Young Waiter competition has been running for 45 years in the UK. Mm -hmm. And some, some great chefs uh, have come from that competition, whether they've won or whether they not won. And Adam was in the competition in 2007 or 2008, and he can tell you about that. But some of the you know, most recognized chefs uh, and waiters mm -hmm. you know, that are now general managers, the number two in command of the Ritz was a, was a Young Chef Young Waiter. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm the president of the Restaurant Association of Great Britain, and I have been for nine years a president. Actually, I might have been for 11 years, actually, thinking about it. <laughs> I think I'm the longest-serving president. And, um, and I was chairman before that. I'm a hotel. I'm a restaurateur, mm -hmm. a hotelier. Uh, just bought a lovely hotel, by the way, which is another story. <laughs> we won't go there. And, um, and Sean and I, Sean's my, my managing director. And Young Chef, Young Waiter is something we acquired through the... Uh, uh, the Restaurant Association, and what we wanted to do was to take what has happened in the UK, and it should happen around the world. This should be a global competition. So this is the very first year mm -hmm. where we have launched World Young Chef, Young Waiter, mm -hmm. and I, I, the the um, the interest and anticipation in where we're going with this, with the USA, with India, with Macau countries all around the world this is the first year this is like the very first ever you know glastonbury or the olympics god knows what's going to happen tomorrow but it will be of in in my world i wanted to create what i call the young hospitality olympics and i saw an opening ceremony with national anthems and national flags being mm. shown, but all for young hospitality superstars of tomorrow mm. and that was the inspiration i needed and coming here, I've been coming here since 1985. You know, I love the Cayman Islands. He knows I love the Cayman Islands. I love Minister Bush's passion for this. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely, uh, you know, I, I get goosebumps listening to him speak about the passion of hospitality. Mm. I've had that in my blood ever since, you know, I started as a chef when I was 16 years old. And to, to develop that here with young Camanians, to me, would be just an amazing opportunity for young Kermanians, but also an amazing opportunity for this for this country to develop its own hospitality skills. Mm -hmm. and, and as I as I listen to you, Mr. Walter, yeah. I'm mindful that when we look at the hospitality sector, in particular, you know, the, the, the culinary aspect of it. I don't know if I could speak to you, you know, Mr. Bush reference, you know, owner of a Michelin star restaurant, uh, Mr. Walton. You, know, you were young. Still relatively young. Now, for some of us, we grew up in the kitchen with our, our parents. For some of us, it was a passion that we always wanted. And whether it was peeling the potatoes uh, as a job in the summer, or whether it was where we wanted to go and fought the school system, the structure, you know, curriculum. I don't want to be this. I want to be there. What was it like for you? For me, I got into hospitality because my parents told me not to and to, <laughs> to go and be a lawyer, go and work in <laughs> finance, because that was that was their vision yeah. in terms of. Oh. They wanted better than what oh. they had. Um, Sounds familiar to me. Yeah. No, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason why I became a chef was because I didn't want to go to university. Mm -hmm. I, sitting in a classroom for me wasn't my thing. So I got an apprenticeship, 
worked from the bottom, 15 years old, started in Glen Eagles Hotel in Scotland, which at that point was the third best hotel in the world. Mm. And I, I, I didn't enjoy the beginning part because, you know, a kid going straight into an environment like that mm. is uh, pretty scary. But then inspiration kicked in and the people that we were working with, they were just very exciting. They, 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 they made my mind think in a way that I was excited rather than the educational part where it, it bored me and I struggled with it. I found a connection to, to be able to express myself. And then, you know, you work really hard in this industry and the world is your oyster. Mm -hmm. The food is the language of this entire planet. Mm -hmm. We all eat, we all get excited, we all, we all communicate, we have fun over, uh, over any dinner table. And I think um, I finally felt at home when I, was, when I was there. That was 18 years ago. Wow. And I appreciate you sharing that because I think sometimes we look at academics and we somehow, uh, I'm being mindful of my friends who are educators and even uh, as parents, we don't appreciate that the intellect, uh, the abilities that come from uh, the culinary enthusiast to the auto mechanic, well, that is intellect. So, so I'm time from your perspective. You look at being the, the helm, running the finances, making sure the human resources and all the other things are there. To get to that point, you still need to have the finance, all the other things. And yet at 15, you're just, we just want to follow passion. Um, well, 45 now is a bit different, right? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. No, I, th I think, I think, um, the di the challenge for any whether you're a chef whether you're a manager whether you're a you know bar person or you know with aspirations to start from the bottom and get to the top there's a there's a business process that you have to go through in this uh, in this you know in this business it's not it's not all about the cooking it's not all about the bartending it's not you know there's a whole process that goes and you know many young people when they start off in the sector and they want to grow in the sector have to be multidisciplined. They have to be able to put their hand to marketing and their hand to HR and their hand to finance, etc. And you can't be, you know, clearly as an individual, you can't be an expert at everything. But I think Adam's mentioned it and Bob's mentioned it. You know, I started like Bob cooking when I was 16. I actually did become a bit of an academic. I did a degree in hospitality mm -hmm. at Leeds University. I worked in corporate life for 10 years and I've worked in as an entrepreneur for the rest of my career but you know during my corporate life I had some amazing experiences you know I've done three Queen's Garden parties for example and whenever you would would you ever get to meet the Queen mm -hmm. unless like Bob you you know went to Buckingham Palace and got an MBE and who knows one day that might happen to me but <laughs> fingers crossed but it, it's it is you know there are many challenges but I think what one thing that shines through that we're all clear about if you're not passionate about this sector and you don't care about this sector. And I've been in it 40 years, and I'm really passionate about it. I really mm. care about it. And I have to say, this is my first trip to Cayman, and for everybody out there that's listening, that Cayman kind has come shining through. I've only been here a, just over a week. I'd love to stay for the rest of my life, actually, because it's <laughs> fantastic. Don't tell Bob if he's listening. No, we won't tell him at all. <clears throat> and also, I love the island time. I love that bit, too. I think it's fantastic. And I think, you know, mm -hmm. I met with Chef Fred this morning at the Ritz to talk about the final in September. Mm -hmm. I met with Luciano from Grand Old House, who's one of our head waiter judges. Mm -hmm. They're both extremely excited about this whole process. We've got now 11 judges from the Cayman Islands involved in this project. We've got some great supporters, and we're really excited about yeah. doing the final in September. And I think, you know, uh, Mr. Walter and perhaps as I turned to you, I think back to uh, Peter Schmid, uh, who came here, and uh, as, as a part of the, the culinary sector, the, the uh, export from... Switzerland, as it were, and then serving as honorary consul for his country. The culinary arts allows you to be able to find the world as your oyster, as Adam shared. But there needs to be formal training. Uh, there needs to be a way that uh, you can appreciate. It's not just if you're in the kitchen, you know, you prepare the food safely and you know, hygienically and then bring it to the table. There has to be something to feast. So with this competition, you're talking about being global. You reference some countries. Is it global uh, uh, initially? How do you see this uh, sort of transpiring? A regional competition and becoming qualifiers for the global one? And okay, so so the competition is open to young professionals. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But that's from all walks of hospitality. That doesn't mean to say you've got to be working in a fine dining restaurant mm -hmm. so you can come from all walks of hospitality that could be contract hospitality it could be small tiny restaurants in fact the small tiny restaurants are the ones you actually really want from so if we're talking about here mm -hmm. then all parts of the island 
from wherever you are in hospitality, um, you can apply. And mm. the, the application is open online right now under mm. the Cayman, uh, under the Young Sheffield Wedding website, under mm. Cayman Islands. But you know, the, the, the same process applies um, in every country. Mm. So whether it's the USA, Cayman Islands, England, or, or India, the mm -hmm. process is exactly the same. And you know, often, Minister Bush said earlier on about how young, young, youngsters of today or young adults of today are going into different uh, industries or different sectors. Maybe it's finance here or wherever it may be mm -hmm. because they don't want their, their children, uh, certainly in, in places like Asia. It's exactly the same issues. It's, it's, it's remarkable. Mm -hmm. And yet, when we see what's happening in the UK, and when you see possibly in the US, you see the the accolades. Mm. I mean, you you just mentioned air repair, you know, mm. the accolades of of the chefs and the rewards mm -hmm. that chefs and waiters, general managers, uh, can get. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw an advert today for a commie chef, which is a basic commie chef on Instagram. Uh, I say a basic commie chef. Okay, it's a commie <laughs> chef, and. Uh, at 27,000 plus, so, so it's going to be 32,000 pound base salary mm -hmm. at the Ritz in London, mm -hmm. opening up. So, I mean, it's not, you know, there are good rewards. It, it, it's it's a tough business to be in. So as we try to not only uh, get people excited about the competition, but attract more to the sector, perhaps through you and then to Adam, when you started out at the same similar age back then versus today, what are some of the transformations you see in the sector I would imagine we all grow in with the passion. We go in, we learn it from the ground up, and it's uh, like an apprenticeship almost. You, know. you can yeah. go similar. So there's a, well, there's a massive change. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm a lot older than him, and yeah. uh, <laughs> no, no well, look if you. <laughs> yes, I'm a lot older. <laughs> I started in 1972 in London, mm -hmm. and I can tell you, five floors down, in a in a in a in a in a hotel in 1972 in London was not a place to be at 16 mm. years old. But, you know, you, you get through it and you work through. For me, it was very... I went to... Um, it's now called the University of West London. At those days, it was called Ealing College, which was had a brilliant uh, cooking uh, section. Mm -hmm. And that was brilliant for me because I suddenly was with people my own age. I was from the you know from country and I'm suddenly in London. So, you know, you get thrown in, but you, f you find out that you, the passion I had for it, the love for cooking that I really enjoyed, that was my real love. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and you, you wander through. So nowadays, there's a lot more. You know, I look at that window and I think of that window there. Every chef today, every new restaurant, and Adam is, is mm -hmm. a prime example, you can see the chefs working. Mm -hmm. You couldn't see the chefs working when I was, when I was starting to cook. And so... It's so much more professional. You know, a kitchen is like a Formula One garage. It's like a hospital. Yeah. It, like, it's pristine. There's no shouting. There's no things being thrown around like there was in 1972. <laughs> and it's just, it's wonderful to watch. I was in a restaurant the other day um, uh, at Ducasse in London. Mm. Uh, uh, Jean-Philippe, what's his surname? Ben, uh, I know, anyway, I haven't got his surname. And I was watching it, 32 chefs in a, in a 40-seater restaurant. And, I, and nobody spoke. It was wonderful. It was magical to watch. Hmm. It, it really is. It needs to be something that people need to see. So that, that almost the, the choreography that you see in the kitchen um, now compared to what it was then. Uh, before I ask Adam, do you think that has led to more uh, of us being attracted to the profession? Because back then, the kitchen was not just literally hot, it was hot tempered. There were a lot of exchanges uh, from the dishwasher to the chef, uh, maybe being a bit verbal. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a tough place to yeah, be. Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to look. He will tell you he's mm. on the front line right now. He's a Michelin star chef on the front line mm -hmm. of working with 17 chefs every day mm -hmm. in his kitchen. But you know, the, 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 the two areas, that mm. one area mm -hmm. is an area that has completely changed, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and for what I see. The other area that is totally changed, of course, it's the service. The front of house, yeah. So yeah. much that service is the key. Before you even look at the menu, mm -hmm. you will know whether you like that restaurant or not because of that person that welcomes you in, that person that brings over your first glass of water, your first drink. Mm -hmm. You will know whether you're going to have a good time or not. Mm -hmm. That is the key. That smile, which is, which is so cheap, 
but everyone can do it. And it's amazing how many people don't. Mm -hmm. So Adam, if I may ask, service versus servitude. Uh, as a chef, you want to be in there. You want to make sure that food is plated and delicious and <clears throat> that person has an experience that not only invites them to come back, but they go, wow, did, was this food or was this heaven? Uh, when you're in there, what are your thoughts? What, what is it that drives you? So within any, I, I own more than one restaurant. I own three restaurants and um, a few other things in London. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and in the UK, and I'm very well, strict. Well, on I don't want to second hold that thought. Hmm? He was in this competition and he didn't <laughs> win. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah the, uh, Bob did share that earlier, yeah, right? Yeah. So I was going to come back to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want me to talk about that part? No, <laughs> no continue where you're going. <laughs> but the thing is, what I do to get youngsters into 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 restaurants is to inspire them, mm -hmm. uh, to get them really excited. And I know in when I first started as well, it, it was a, just an industry to as a stopping gap mm -hmm. while you're going to university, you're on break, that sort of thing. But now it's a sexy industry. You earn a lot of money if you work your socks off and you really try. So mm -hmm. it's one where you can be quite successful. It's an industry that you, you build that you, you build that teamwork that you really love to go to work and you you know you, you want to see them. You have a beer after work, that sort of stuff. You, it's mm -hmm. it's beautiful, mm -hmm. and basically it's a family. Mm -hmm. Now, I think hospitality has changed from when I started to now, based on it being a place that the hours are still long, it's still warm, it's still got all them negative parts, but it allows creativity, uh, creativity from all levels. Mm -hmm. And I think the way that we should evolve is, I'm big on sustainability. Mm -hmm. My group is literally built on that one word. And this industry, with lock, with COVID happening, has kind of shoved, shoved the, uh, mm -hmm. the little... Um, the floor basically from two years worth of uh, hospitality training so now it's even more important to to grasp to grasp youngsters that uh, that um perhaps don't know what they want to do because uh, i didn't want to be a chef at that you know i didn't and i am where i am now because i had mentors around me mm -hmm. that got me excited so i think now's the time to really give someone the platform to to find one mm -hmm. find out who they are and and where what path they want to go down and and secondly if someone does know they want to do it shoot for the stars because right. this industry is so rewarding, but it's all down to the leaders that run them operations to excite. Right. So before I ask the Honourable Minister, uh, Sean, from your perspective, Adam is saying you know we need to attract people. Here's a competition that globally and over time, I like the, the vision that Bob has relative to the Olympics, I mean the culinary Olympics. I can be, a, you know, maybe not a judge, but I could be one of the tasters. You know, who <laughs> but we bring people in and fun to appreciate that just like how your mother you know, put that food on the table with the love, uh, you need to have that passion. Uh, what does this competition do for the industry, but for that young uh, okay, man, you know, there and always listening, say, you know what, I have this passion. Maybe it's the this, this service in the front of the house, or maybe it's in the kitchen, and they go from the chef de party to the, the sous chef, like, all the way up to the executive chef. Yeah, I, th I think um, that bit probably is the most important mm -hmm. bit. So for, for us, we've been running the competition in the UK, or I've physically been running it for the last four years so I've seen you know the the semi-finalists and the finalists so we've had you know hundreds of applications online so mm -hmm. we've modernized the whole approach so now there's an online application process so we're using technology to its best effect and then all the judging is done online and then we narrow it down mm -hmm. to um, 10, 10 chefs and 10 waiters that will go to the uh, to the final in their respective territory or country mm -hmm. and it's uh, honestly uh, I think the fact that they're getting recognized I think these people are 26 years and under mm -hmm. they're young people they're working really hard and this gives them it's a bit like a Bob's once said it, it's a bit like the X Factor you know you've got Susan Boyle who <laughs> you know had been singing all of her life in a pub a club <coughs> and, a, and uh -huh. wherever you know and all of a sudden she does Ness and Dormer and she's now, you know, a global superstar. Uh -huh. And I think this is this is a great platform for these young people to be recognized not only by their peers, but, but by mm -hmm. the people that are in the sector generally and globally across the world. And we're mm -hmm. and Bob said we're creating the global hospitality Olympics. And I think mm -hmm. my only my only concern at the minute is where I'm gonna get all the flags from for this competition in November. <laughs> uh, where we go to we'll uh, where we go to Monaco. <laughs> we're, we're bringing our own so yeah. don't worry about it. Fantastic. <laughs> Hands on. But I but I think it's gonna I think it, I think they're gonna be mm -hmm. honestly they're, they're gonna be super excited about the whole thing. And we've got some you know, our our winners last year in the UK both won a Mercedes car each. Mm -hmm. I and mean, it doesn't get better than that. 
What else? Of, this is of you know. I remember you're 24, Dwayne. <coughs> I was thinking 25. <laughs> but, but honourable minister, as you were sharing, you know, Adam was it the winner? And look at where he's at. Correct. So for those you know parts of who don't win, uh, it's like anything. You know, you train under a good coach, you improve. So I remember in Pirates Week, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, David Wattlick said to me, "How something can these young people cook?" Mm-hmm. And his company, Just Fish and whatever it was, just donated a bunch of fish every time. Mm-hmm. And our very first time, Brittany Borden mm-hmm. came first, Justine came second, Malik came third. Mm-hmm. Never forget it. And there was these kids, you had to prepare everything from scratch. There was the fish. You brought your own ingredients, and you prepared it right there in front of everyone, mm-hmm. out in the streets. Mm-hmm. And Brittany went on to be, she's a pretty, in fact, I heard that she finally got the thing that she entered last <coughs> night. Mm-hmm. And I think this is going to be a wonderful thing for people like them who are passionate mm-hmm. about the cooking. And from that age, you could see it. Yeah. And they were only 13, 14 years old or whatever. And they were in there mixing, putting stuff on. But I think we have to do a better job mm-hmm. of going out and recruiting Right. We have to say, who likes to cook in the kitchen? And sometimes you see kids that they like to cook, and you talk to the parents, do they really help? If they say yes, then you start to talk to them. Right. Because it's something that I tell people that my ministry is going to do different, and that is you have to sell a child a dream. You mm-hmm. see the talent, then my first approach is going to go to the parents. Get the parents on the same page. Let us sell your child a dream. Mm-hmm. Is it in this chef for you? Is it beyond to be a chef? Want to be a cook? Can I be good at it? But let's see where it goes. Is it in football? We'll let it, we have to have that dream of going, wanting to go someplace mm-hmm. and motivate him. He just said it, you know. People molded him and people mo- made it excited, made it fun. And that's, that's our job. We have to make sure to do that. Mm-hmm. And the, comp- the competitors in this, I am pretty sure if they do a good job, some of these r- chefs that you're talking about will say, come on. Mm-hmm. Come hang out with us down at the Ritz. Come hang out. And according to James Miles, he always talks about the guy at the Ritz. Yeah. He has always bragged about the guy at the Ritz who has always been helpful and wanting to bring young people into it. So yeah. hats off. Indeed. Mr. Walton, with that, you referenced the formal academic system and our approach to education and teaching and learning and the fact that not all of us, want necessarily to gravitate to being, you know, the expectations of our parents and like how do we decide, you know what, I'm gonna do the the one thing that you probably don't want. But how do we get the policymakers and politicians, the principals and the parents, uh, to appreciate that within learning, if your passion is in the culinary arts, if your passion is front of house, that that is uh, perhaps as more if not more so rewarding. So that's a big question. Mm-hmm. That's a big question. That's a <clears throat> that's more of a political question than it is for my. <laughs> that's what we asked it. The future yeah. um, so, neighbourhood, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I have. Uh, I, I've. I am desperate to get it onto the UK schools curriculum mm-hmm. of getting hospitality. Hospitality yeah. is a great word now. It yes. used to be catering, cooking, home economics, whatever it used to mm-hmm. be at school. But hospitality covers so many areas. Sean and Adam have covered. You know, whether it's marketing, whether it's. Mm whether it's management, whether it, whatever part of hospitality. So if you could get that on to schools, and I believe in the UK we should do that because it offers so many opportunities. Look, this island, uh, the country, the Cayman Islands, um, one of your biggest employers is hospitality. Mm-hmm. You need homegrown talent here. What better way to do it than to put it into your schools? So, you know, I, I, the guys are going to go to the UCCI tomorrow to meet there and um, to help. And I want this competition to help the Cayman Islands in every way possible. One, we're putting the Cayman Islands or the competition will put the Cayman Islands on a global stage, which is brilliant. So everything this competition can do, if it attracts more, a few more, a lot more people into into the sector, then then it's really done its, its way. Mm-hmm. And the further we go into it, the longer the competition runs, of course, the more powerful the whole thing starts to get. And so, um, as I said in, in, in my opening speech, I want your young chef and young waiter to be the new Aaron Jarvis, you know? Why wouldn't he be the, you know, you've got this superstar young golfer. Yeah. 
Well, this is it, and I think I'm going to miss that as we close our discussion. You, you're reminded that it doesn't matter whether it's golfing, uh, as Mr. Walton shared, whether it's football and Martinez, or, or it doesn't matter. If we provide the avenue, we provide the support, the nurturing, and the environment, you know, that today you know, we could see the, the, the future Pelis of football, the Muhammad yeah. Ali's, you know, my, my personal favorite, you know, Giada De Laurentiis, but don't tell anyone about that. <laughs> because there's a, a passion and a charisma and a creativity that, that comes to the fore. So as we close it on the minister, as you started the discussion, what uh, some of the important words you want to leave with our listeners relative to the competition? To Kimanians out there, especially you parents, if you see, if you're seeing where your child enjoys coming into the kitchen, if you see them being adventurous with food, with the way they do it, look at Adam. Google him. It's right there. It's easy to find. Adam Handling from Dundee, Scotland. Wasn't born with a gold spoon in his mouth. At 15, 16 years old, went into the restaurant system. Now owns three or four restaurants. And one of those is a, star, a, a, Michelin, star? a Michelin star yeah. restaurant. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to help our children, or help guide them in areas where it is not work, it's enjoyment. Because believe you me, if you go to do something that you love, it is not work at all. And here's a perfect example. And to Bob, I was happy the day that you met uh, Eric and that this is where it's gotten. I'm hoping that this will be the beginning of really pushing the hospitality industry that they can see, yes, there's a warm side to it. But there's also a glamorous side. Everybody, I will quote Arden McLean from East End, a lot of people see the glory, but they don't know the story. And let us start a pity story that we can have a lot more of our young people having some glory in this field mm -hmm. and getting us back to our roots in the hospitality industry. Kimanians by nature are a very friendly, loving people. And if a lot of people came here and would get out of their cliques of just their English friends or their Canadian friends or their friends and get to know some of the indigenous community, they would meet some of the most loyal, friendly, nice people in the world. The complete opposite of me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Valentine, sir. I just, um, <clears throat> just wanted to kind of put my little operator's hat on and just say that uh, uh, youngchefyoungwaiter.com, um, if you go onto that forward slash um, Cayman Islands, the application is open now, today. You can apply. It closes on the 15th of uh, August. And the, the final is happening at the, uh, the Ritz-Carlton on the 13th of September this year. So once mm. you've applied and then the judges have judged you online, um, you'll be notified in terms of shortlisting and then ready for the final. Mm. And then the uh, world final uh, in Monaco is November the 16th. So... Uh, everybody should be putting all those dates in their diary. Indeed. Well, Honourable Minister, we will endeavour to reach out uh, to your ministry to have you know, future discussions to remind people and hopefully encourage more of us to encourage you know, the youth to consider uh, the competition. It's a pleasure, Mr. Walter. Uh, Thank you. May you enjoy your, your return visit home. Well, I won't, no, I'm not going to enjoy my return visit home, I have to tell you. I would much prefer to be here for the next, well, I could probably stay here till September, couldn't I, before? No, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much for, for coming you. on board. Thank and you. Again, Honourable Minister, for helping us facilitate this discussion. Thanks for having us. Well, to our listeners, you know, stay tuned for all the programming that we have uh, for the remainder of the afternoon. Please uh, join me start in the morning for the record, and then come back for we'll talk today right after the media news. Until then, be blessed.